Hi, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer, and welcome to my website and my YouTube channel. Uh, we're continuing this SIBO video series titled Everything You Want to Know About SIBO. And specifically in today's video, I want to talk to you about the topic of probiotics. As we learn more and more about the microbiome, we're learning about the importance uh, of the various strains, uh, what these various strains uh, do and the role that they play in keeping our body healthy. And this is especially true when it comes to the health of the brain. It's very, very important as it relates to overall digestive health and even immune system health. People who have Crohn's and celiac disease and SIBO and IBS, when they first start taking probiotics, especially the right probiotic, many find that this was the missing piece in their health puzzle. Others, they don't notice much of a change whatsoever. And so if you don't feel a change, as long as you're taking the right strain, then I recommend that you just give it more time. All too often, I think, people fall into the mindset that if they don't notice much of a change within the first couple of weeks or a month or so, that the probiotic that they're taking isn't working. And that's really not the case with probiotics, all right? Now, the one thing that can happen sometimes is that in a small percentage of people who take probiotics, um, and unfortunately, actually, we're seeing this more and more often, um, unfortunately, they feel worse. And, and so if you do feel worse, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should give up on that probiotic just yet, all right? If you feel worse when you take a probiotic, meaning that you have more bloating and more gas and more diarrhea and more constipation and more abdominal pain, then I want you to try these five suggestions before you give up, okay? Probiotics, especially the right kind of probiotic at the right time, uh, taken um, for the right reason, in my opinion, is absolutely essential to resetting your microbiome. If you've started taking probiotics and you felt worse, then I want to share with you again those five reasons why you had that bad experience, but most importantly, what you can do differently. And I hope with this new information that I'm going to share with you um, and provide to you that you don't give up on them, okay? In another video, I talked about the specific strains that you may want to consider, as well as uh, the ones that you may want to avoid based on the phase of treatment that you're in. And so when you get done watching this video, today's video, um, it'd be a good idea to go back and watch that video as well. So with that being said, let's jump into this. The five reasons why you feel worse when you take probiotics and what you can do to feel better, okay? So reason number one, people feel uh, worse when they take probiotics, of course, is that the specific strain within that probiotic formula is just the wrong kind. Um, you've already have, for example, too much of that particular strain already in your gut. And the reason I say that is if you look at this test that I ran on a patient, you're gonna notice that certain strains are elevated. They're, they're, they came back as being high and they're in the red region. And so if this is a patient that has all the signs of GI issues and these levels are elevated, to me, I may not want to prescribe that particular probiotic where that strain is already elevated, okay? It may be like kind of fueling the fire, so to speak. Remember, the bacteria and the bacterial diversity found in the microbiome is, of course, without a doubt, it's highly unique to you. There is no one size fits all. And so we have different microbial blueprint from person to person to person. Now, unfortunately, there is really no way of knowing if it's the wrong strain or the right strain really without testing. And even then, these tests are really used as tools uh, so that we can make better clinical judgment and decisions when it comes to treating a patient. So my best suggestion is that if you can't get this test, is to start with a very, very small dose of, of a particular probiotic and see how you respond. You should know within a few hours, uh, maybe even a couple days, if the probiotic that you're taking is problematic. And if you're still having a bad reaction, even after taking that small dose, then my best recommendation and what I suggest is that you open up the capsule, perhaps sprinkle it on some food, or perhaps even try taking it at a different time of the day. Uh, so for example, if you always take your probiotics in the morning, try taking them at night before you go to bed. All right, That's sometime, that sometimes can make a big difference. Um, reason number two, is that you feel worse when you take a probiotic is simply due to die off, okay? There are a handful of reasons for die off, but the changes that might cause die off are usually uh, related to either switching from uh, a processed food to a real food diet. And so we have the death of these bacteria and in the process of that death, we get that die off. Um, and so another reason is we start or we increase a probiotic dosage, right? You may be taking a particular strain of probiotics and now you up your, your dosage. Sometimes this can be a cause um, of, of die off. And then also another reason for die off that's very, very common is when you begin, of course, taking an antibiotic or you take an antiparasitic or you take an antifungal. And of course, any of these, uh, without a doubt, can be problems. Um, 
Another potential uh, common problem that could be the result of a die-off is when you introduce a new strain um, that begins changing the terrain of the gut. So maybe you were taking one particular strain of a, of a, of a probiotic and then a couple months later or a couple weeks later, whatever it was, um, you started taking a different strain. Sometimes that's enough to change the terrain of the gut and that's really what die-off really is. There's a change in the, in the terrain of the gut um, caused by these bacteria. Regardless, in each of these scenarios, the change in treatment will cause substantial changes in the populations of the gut flora, and that's a big portion of, of knocking out those, those bad guys, so to speak. All right? When this happens, when that die-off does occur, um, they can be, there can be a release of toxins that need to be excreted. Uh, sometimes the liver needs some additional support, but those are some of the reasons that you should be aware of um, if, if that's occurring. Um, Typically, the symptoms of die-off usually last about three to seven days, and those symptoms of die-off uh, can subs usually subside within that period of time. If it becomes unbearable for whatever reason, what I suggest that you do is you discontinue a day or two and then try again at half dosage. But be sure you are having at least one bowel movement per day. Okay? I usually think about a die-off reaction when a person's symptoms um, increase or when they begin to feel more sluggish or if a person begins to experience uh, flu-like symptoms, okay? It usually feels like your whole body is in quicksand and just working so much harder. And so again, those are just some of the more typical symptoms that I would recommend you be on the lookout for when you change that strain of probiotics or uh, if you start an antimicrobial protocol and you begin to experience that. Um, that die off. Reason number three uh, you feel worse when you take probiotics is that you have a problem with your migrating motor complex, otherwise known as the cleansing waves. Now this migrating motor complex is what clears the bacteria in the small intestines between meals and it's one of the major, major, major pieces of why people develop SIBO in the first place. All right? If someone has a very slow migrating motor complex, adding more and more of the wrong kinds of bacteria really are just going to fuel this fire. So in cases like this, what you want to focus on is improving the migrating motor complex and improving the gastrointestinal motility before introducing the specific kinds of probiotics that I just mentioned. Um, sometimes the, uh, the adjunct or the use of a prokinetic can be very, very helpful. I've talked about this in, in a past video. But if you, suggest this, uh, if you suspect that this is a problem, what I suggest you do is you go back and again, there's a video series that I did titled The 11 Reasons You Can't Get Rid Of and Shake SIBO. Um, this is a two-part video series that I talk quite a bit about that migrating mo motor complex, why it slows down or why it even speeds up in some cases. Um, and so that might be a, a video that you find uh, to be very helpful to you. Now, the fourth and fifth reason uh, why people who take probiotics feel worse comes down to the fact of what we call a prebiotic, okay? Prebiotics can be a major, major problem for people with bacterial overgrowth, okay? So can damage to the brush border enzymes. Very often when a person has small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, there's also been some damage to the brush border enzymes, all right? So two things to be aware of, so reasons for number five. As it relates to probiotics, um, even some of the best manufacturers of probiotics contain prebiotics. And while these prebiotics are, are just a tremendous, tremendous benefit to the long-term uh, uh, health of the microbiome, and they're absolutely essential. Sometimes in the earlier stages of, of SIBO treatment, people's guts do not respond well to these, to these prebiotics. So if you are taking probiotics right now, what I would suggest you do is you grab a bottle um, of what you're taking and actually start to look at the ingredients. And if you see something that says inulin or chicory or arabinogalactan, if it says GOS or galacto-oligosaccharides, or if it says FOS, fructo-oligosaccharides, these are all prebiotics, and you may want to avoid these for a period of time um, in, your, in, your treat, in your phase of treatment. The other thing is, if you're drinking tea, some teas contain inulin and chicory. So again, you know, you have to be aware, you have to be conscious of the things that you're eating, all right, uh, and drinking for that matter. For many people suffering with SIBO, there is often injury, like I just talked about, to the brush border enzymes. And again, these are the cells that are uh, responsible for releasing the enzymes that help you break down these disaccharides, these, these sugars, okay? Again, these brush border enzymes help break down various kinds of sugars and even starches. And without these enzymes breaking down the sugars and starches, 
these sugars and starches now get digested in the small intestines and they begin to ferment and that causes bloating and, and obviously that's going to feed the bacteria. And again, this is why the prebiotics could be doing more harm than good, all right? They're, again, they're feeding the bacteria. So if you are noticing that, if you are noticing more bloating when you take prebiotics uh, or probiotics for that matter, or when you're eating certain foods that are high in carbohydrates and car uh, high in starches, that may be one of the reasons, okay? So in this case, you may need to take a probiotic without the prebiotic. Um, if you want more information on probiotics and prebiotics, uh, you can watch a video that I did that goes into much more detail about the specific strains uh, that have been studied when it comes to SIBO and the ones that are the most beneficial. And so that's going to wrap up today's video, all right? If there's uh, any other questions that you have, please feel free to leave a comment below. But there you go. There's five reasons why you feel worse when you take probiotics and things to be aware of, all right? So in closing today's video, I'll leave you with a couple final thoughts about probiotics. Uh, number one. Um, number one is that probiotics should be specific to the person and and if you can get testing it's very important that you get a stool test that looks at your microbiome very very important in this area number two if you have a Facebook friend who also has a GI problem and took a probiotic and they had a bad reaction that doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to have a bad reaction okay number three if you don't get a test that looks and quantifies the strains of your microbiome it's going to be a little bit of trial and error. Number four, taking time, um, timing can, can really make the difference, okay? If you've had a problem where you've taken a probiotic in the morning, try taking that uh, probiotic at night. If you had a problem uh, when you took them at night, try taking them in the morning. So again, just try taking them at different times of the day. And my fifth point would be, some people may not be able to tolerate probiotics uh, at the beginning of treatment uh, when they first tend to be the most sensitive. And so if that's you, don't give up. Just try implementing some of those suggestions. And number six, when you get your gut under control a bit more and gut motility has improved a little bit, um, that's a great time to, again, start perhaps introducing those prebiotics and probiotics. Because truly, they are a very, very important point um, and an, an important part of restoring the health of the gut microbiome. So there you go. Until next time, take care.